Now, this afternoon, I will talk about how to overcome all sins. I'm not saying I'm perfect. But every time I have sins that come to my heart, my mind, I immediately I take care of it. Some people will say, well, all people have sins, so why look for more holiness? Why not just live in the grace of God? But we know that sins are always destructive. In Galatians chapter 6, verse Whoever sows to please the first from the first will reap destruction. So, sins always bring destruction. Hello. Yeah. Oh, hello. hello. Now, some people say, well, I just sin sometimes and ask Jesus to forgive me. Is there any destruction to that? I use an illustration. I An illustration. A good pastor in many areas he's very good. And by one time he cannot control his anger and he blows up his anger in front of his member or his wife. Or if one time he looks at a beautiful woman and then is attracted by a beautiful woman, just look at her, and some other people saw that, and then I want to ask you, does that affect him? No, no, Changu mu pasteri, umuga wo yi hagarari ye ngoka wo numu gore muiza chio na vugu buranga aga kurugwa numu buranga rangiza guama soya katwa arwa kumeza kuri cha abanu wa soya kavire. Esi vyo bimujira inga ruka. Does it affect him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one sin can destroy a person. Icha chime cha rimburu muno. You know, for instance, a very famous evangelist. Urujero, umuvuga utumwa wichirangi, wichama mare. All the way to the back, the back partition, the back partition, the back. No, no, right, you're right, but there is a partition in the back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, he might be very successful. And if someone discovers some sin, it can destroy his whole ministry. And also, any sin can destroy our, con you know, a clear conscience and make us feel guilty in front of God. And brings problem with people that his relationship with people were a problem. And also would have problem in himself that he has guilt feeling. And I want to say that too. For many people, many pastors, they might do very well in the church, but in the home, the wife is the one who doesn't like him. Because he might be too controlling at home. Or he doesn't care about his wife. He said, everyone in the church likes me, but you don't like me. 
Mu pasta kaza ata bantu bose mu rusengero barankunda ariko ubu ni utankunda utankunda kandi urumugore wanje You know any area that we have seen whether it's secret you know sometimes it's secret but it will affect the person Mu byukuri ari cyaha kiboneka ku mugaragaro ariko ari ikindi kiberi yo ngiyo mu bwiherero mu bwihisho That is why Galatians 6:8 says that whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will reap destruction Niyo mambo mu bagarati bice bitandatu umurongo wa munana vango ubibira mu mubiri we muri uwo mubiri azasaruramo kubora ariko ubibira mu mwuka wo azasarura mu mwuka ubugingo buhoraho Another verse is John chapter 5 verse 14 Ahandi ni Yohana ibice bitanu umurongo wa 14 That there was a man with 38 years of sickness and Jesus healed him Haru mugabo wari ufite imyaka 38 arwaye Yesu aramukiza After he was healed Jesus said to him Amaze gukira indwara Yesu aramubwira ati Sin no more lest the worst thing will happen to you Nuko ngere gukora icyaha ukundi kugira ngo icyago utazongera guhura n'icyago kiruti cy'ambere What it means is that if he continues sin he will give the devil a foothold Bivango nakomeza gukora icyaha azahaba haye satani icyuho and the devil can bring sickness or other consequences to him Satani ashora kuzana ubundi bumuga ubundi burugwara n'izindi ngaruka z'indwara Satan knows where our sins are Kuko satani azi ibyaha byacu aho bibarizwa And Satan will use our sins to attack us Hanyuma satani akoresha ibyo byaha kugira ngo bitugereho Now there are many people because of the sins they have emotional problem they are unhappy Bero abantu benshi kubera ibyaha bibazanira ingaruka zo kutanezerwa kutishima guhora bababaye And in fact the health Yewe ibyo kandi umuntu ahora rakaye bifata kubuzima bikaba byagabanya n'iminsi yawe yo kumva It affect the sleep bigatuma utanasinzira It affect the, uh, the ministry So sin always destroy. Some people say, well, most of my life, you know, I take care of it. It's just a little sin, little sin. But I want to say that a little sin destroy not just a little bit. A little sin can destroy a lot. Okay, now this is his whole life. He just have a little sin here. It can destroy more than just that area. He can destroy his ministry, his family, his relationship, his spiritual life. In James chapter 2 verse 10. James chapter 2 verse 10. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumble at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. Avango usitara nibura kugategeko kamwe ngo ashobora bishobora kwangiza ubugingo bwe bwose. What it mean is for instance someone is angry with someone you muno arakari yundi it just guilty of one point. Yewe ibi bituma ushinjwa mu rundi ruba mu rundi But, but it will affect his relationship with God. And it will take away his clear conscience, his peace. And it will take away his ministry. And family life. Because the wife will say you're always angry with this person you're unhappy with this person and it makes the family unhappy. After you know before I experience the Holy Spirit I let sin sometimes influence me. I just said I'll ask God to forgive me later. I didn't realize the importance of following holiness in God. 
ntabwo nari nzi umumaro wo gukurikira imana ndumukiranutse but after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I see that God is so full of love. And God sees us as so important. And God wants to use us mightily. And I saw that I pray for many people and they experience God. And I can raise some people to serve God. So I said, I don't want to waste my life. And I realized that even a little sin, when people know about it, they will attack. And also Satan will attack. So I, whenever I have any sin, I pay attention to it. Now the key to overcoming sins, first is that we know all sins are destructive. You know, some toilets are very smelly. You have been there, right? And when God sees a person has sins, God is very unhappy. God finds it, you know, he, he doesn't like it and he's, he has to stand it. And it's hard for the person to have a strong presence of God. So after experience the Holy Spirit, I really treasure my life. And I see that God raised me up gradually to, to give me many teachings that I can teach people. And God has blessed me so much in different areas. And God gave me a desire to use, let God use my life to the maximum. Because God has a wonderful plan in heaven. His plan is great and wonderful. And one day we go to heaven and say, Wow, God, you have such a great plan for me. But I only live up so little. Some people just live out God's plan so little. If we all follow God and love God and be filled with the Holy Spirit and really take care of our problems, our life can go to a high level. And Ephesians 4.26 says that, 27 says that, do not give the devil a foothold. Any sin will let Satan come into our life. And he came to steal and to kill and destroy. Satan has no mercy. He finds anything to attack, he will attack. So I treasure my life. And I treasure your life. Your life is very precious. Now God has given me a five steps to victory. Now after we ask God to forgive us, how can we have victory? First step, you write this down. First, aware of the sin. Aware, the word aware. Now this, 
this five steps to victory, you can use it for handling emotions or negative thinking, any problem you can use it. So the first step is aware. I know. I know this. I have some anger. And then number two is destructive. Destructive. Any sin is destructive. And then number three. What does the Bible tell me to do? So the Bible tells us to forgive and to bless people and to be holy and gentle and kind. So what does the Bible say, tell us to do? And number, five, number four, pray to get strength, pray. And number five, choose to obey. Now let me tell you, these five steps to victory is the way the Holy Spirit leads us to obey Him. Now we all have experienced this. That the Holy Spirit let us know our sin first aware. And number two will bring us to realize this is destructive. And number three, well, you know, then the Bible. The, uh, the Holy Spirit will remind us of the Bible. What should we do? And then number four, we pray to ask for forgiveness and to have strength. We pray to have forgiveness and strength. And then number five, to choose to obey. Okay, I'll use an example. If someone, this person, he doesn't like me. If this person doesn't like me. And then I'm angry. I realize I have anger. And I know I have destructive. It's destructive. And number three, what does the Bible say? In Psalm 118, verse 6. Psalm 118, verse 6. If God is for me, I'm not afraid. What can people do to me? So if he's bad to me, what can he do? And I want to tell you, he is, you know, he doesn't like me. It doesn't mean I have to be angry. If I'm angry, what happens is, I take on his sin. Now look at me. That is his sin, his anger. But, and he yells at me. No, no, yeah, And then I get angry, I'm kicking on his sin. His anger is his problem, right? Should I take the problem? Do you know some people who are always angry? Always yell at people? They are like that. Should I take on his problem? Should I? No. Oh yeah. I should not take any problem from people. But some people say, well, he yells at you. You have to yell back. Let me ask you, he yells at you. Where does that come from? The anger, where does that come from? Does it come from God? Where does it come from? It comes from his sinful nature or from Satan. So it's something it comes from Satan. Right. Or from the sinful nature. So it's something bad, right? If he has something bad, do I take it? 
We don't want a ticket, right? Let me ask you. Do you eat garbage? Do you like to eat garbage? You don't like to eat garbage, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what I say is, he's not garbage. He's not garbage. But the angry words, angry action, these are garbage, right? So we discern that this, this person, because he has so much anger, he has all this anger, frustration in him and his sin. When I see it, I have compassion on him. I care about him. He has to face God. He will be punished by God. And he has a, you know, a terrible life. So if he has a terrible life, should I also have a terrible life? Are there people around you who get angry easily or unhappy easily? Are there people like that? Are there people like that? Yeah. Is it easy for us to get angry because of them, right? Is it easy? If someone yells at you, 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 if no. Now when we realize that we discern, discern. When you look at the garbage, you discern it's garbage. You don't eat the garbage, right? So when we discern someone is angry with me, Someone talks negatively. I discern he has this problem. So aware. Aware. Aware that he's angry and then I get angry. And I know it's destructive, it's garbage. And the Bible says, what can people do to me? If he yells at me, will I die? <laughs> will I die? No. Will I die? No. no. But if we take it, we become, <laughs> we, take it <laughs> we become frustrated. So we ask God to forgive us. And ask God to give us strength. And then even when he's angry, I choose to be peaceful. And, but some people say, it's unfair. He, he yells at me, I have to at least stare at him. At least turn my face away from him. To be fair. Let me ask you, is it fair? Is it fair? Is it fair? No, it's not fair. Actually, what happened is, we get angry, we get his sins onto us. Because we don't care. Let me tell you, this is not easy to handle. You know the method. But to apply it is not easy. Today or the next week when someone yells at you and you look at the person and you want to bless the person. 
You want to be kind to the person. Because my life is precious. I don't want any anger to take away the blessings of God. Let me ask you, is your life precious? Yes. You know, many people's lives are destroyed because of other people's sin. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? You know, any reason to sin is no reason. So when we discern it and then we choose to obey, when he yells at us, we don't have to say anything that try to pierce him, you know. We don't have to say, you are one who eat garbage and always talk garbage. We don't have to say that. We don't have to offend the person. We can say something like, thank you for reminding me. I'll pay attention to it. <laughs> now, you say, that's too hard. <laughs> but in the heart we can say, the whole heaven is happy because of my response. God is very happy because I answer peacefully. And God said, this is someone I like. Let me ask you, what is more important? That God, that God likes me or to get even with him? What is more important? Yeah, that no, God no, likes us. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. 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 Now, let me talk about another thing. You were standing too far. Right? Okay, now, for instance, many men say it's too hard to avoid lust. I know fornication, adultery, you know, is common in many places. And sometimes even some pastors dare not speak against that. Because he might have a, 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 a prostitute in a church and a, well, he did not say anything against that because he might lose the money of the prostitute. And also sometimes when, you know, we see a beautiful girl Beautiful man, handsome man, and then we just attract him. And we say, with just a little look, a little look, a little thought, a little thought. But, but according to the whole Bible, this is destructive. After experience of the Holy Spirit, I really handle it. Any moment I notice I'm attracted by any sexy woman, in me, I say, God loves me and this is destructive. 
Jerero yom vijise kusya ngareva na vani jemani na munda jewe kose na wenye meri vindi mura. And my life is precious. Kana kuzima bganje, uchingo bganje, nuka kachiro. I don't want to waste my life because of uh, lust in my in my heart. Na wenye ne kuhomba, changu se kuhomba ijuru kuvera irai. Now, if God sees in this person, He wants to serve God. But he has lust inside him. Will God use him greatly? God knows that this one has danger. Have you heard Christians or even pastors sometimes have sexual problems? I mean, uh, adultery or fornication problem? Now many people are overcome by this sin because they think I just sin once and then I'll ask God to forgive me. Or they might say, well, one time sin is not so serious. But when I, after experience the Holy Spirit, I say, my, our life is so precious, God is so loving, I don't want to waste my life at all. And I want God to be totally happy with me. Now I know we still have thoughts that come into the mind. But I stop it as soon as it comes in. I stop it as soon as I can. Okay. And I find that then if I realize the sin quickly, I can overcome it. If I know it's very destructive. And I want to say that any sin can be overcome if we realize it's destructive and God is full of love and we treasure God. So you can try to apply it to your sins today and you know every day. Now sometimes God brought the memory of my sins in the past. Whenever I think of these sins, God brought me to have an attitude. God, God taught me to hate the sin. I hate the sin. I'm really sorry I've sinned in the past. I want to hate it and reject it. So in the future when a temptation comes, I'll reject it because I hate it. I hate anything that take away the blessings of God. So I hope that we we'll all pay attention to the sins in our, in our heart, in our, in our daily life, and in our speech. Now even in ministry sometimes people have sins of, uh, I just want a big church. I will honor the person with more offering. I will see the person as more important. This is also a sin. When I just want a big church or want people to honor me, 
These are all sins. And God is so wonderful, His plan is so wonderful. I don't want to waste my life. So I, I ask that you would go home and then in your prayer or when you're walking, think about the sins in the past and you say, I hate it. I don't want to commit that sin again. I hate it. I reject it. When you really honor God, God knows it and He will have pleased, uh, He is pleased with you and He will bless you greatly. Okay, let us stand to pray. Oh Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you. You are holy God. Holiness is beautiful. In heaven there is no more sin. The people in heaven don't get angry anymore. They don't despise people anymore. So heaven is very, very beautiful. But very often in our daily life, in our family life or church life, we would have negative thinking and feelings. Sometimes we don't like people. Please forgive our sins. And also we might have lust or frustration Pride, all these are destructive. Lord, help us to hate the sin. Lord, we want you and your blessings. I want to live in your presence. I don't want anything to affect us. Help us to overcome any sins that come to us. As soon as they come in our mind, immediately I want to take care of that. I want to take care of any negative thinking, any negative feelings, any frustration. And thank you, Jesus. You really forgive us. And you give us a new start again. We want to love you and honor you. And obey you and live a holy life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. To live in holiness is wonderful. To live in your love is wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So this teaching I hope you spread to more people. Why do so many people, even Christians, commit adultery or fornication? Because they think it's not serious. So I hope you see a serious and help them to see a serious to help them turn away from sin. And also to motivate people to obey God by the grace of God, by the love of God. Amen. Amen. Amen.